In its unmodded state, Mountain Blade is a pretty realistic game. The factions, places, and characters are all fictional, but the laws of the universe is the same as our real world. There's no fantasy in the game. For those who don't know what Mountain Blade is, you start out as a lone bloke, and you recruit people into your party. Your party size is determined by your leadership skill and your renown. Renown is earned by winning battles and doing great deeds. As your troops fight battles, the ones who survive can be upgraded into a better kind of soldier. You have a lot of options open to you. You can become a trader, serve a faction, become a bandit, piss everyone off by making your own faction, marry a partner, and a lot more. It's a fantastic game that's sunk at least 250 hours into it. There's a bunch of mods for this game which had fantasy elements, and my favourite is Fantasy Karadia. This mod transforms Mountain Blade into a high fantasy setting with dwarves, elves, orcs, undead demons, and a lot more. The setting seems loosely inspired by the Forgotten Realms setting, because it features drow whose names would fit right into a realms novel. It also features artifacts from the Forgotten Realms such as Vorpal Blades, which is a chance to outright kill someone on the hit. It also adds magic. You get all the standard stuff like fireball hurling and other things, but most importantly it adds necromancy. The necromancy exists as a skill that you invest points into. While camping you can use a necromancy skill, which heavily damages your health points, in exchange for adding undead units to your party. The quality of the units created is dependent on how high your necromancy skill is. An unskilled necromancer may only produce a handful of zombies or unarmored skeletons, but a skilled one will get better units like heavily armored zombie warriors or skeleton knights. At first you can only choose between making zombies or skeletons, but with more points invested you can also choose to make shadows. Shadows are capable of eventually becoming shadow mages, which are essential for tougher fights later on. At first necromancy is rather weak and almost a liability. The undead are always trying to break free from your control, especially the tougher ones like shadows, so early on you can have situations where your own minions will break free and kill you during a fight. Fortunately, having specialist units in your party like dark mages or other necromancers helps to keep your minions under control. This is very useful during the early stages of the game. However, once your character levels up enough and invests loads of points into the necromancy skill, Undead will stop losing control. My level 30 character has a very high necromancy skill, and I can't even remember the last time I lost control of my Undead. It's honestly a pretty cool mechanic because it adds roleplay value of a young necromancer's struggle with their craft. It also adds a bit of extra difficulty to the beginning stages of the game. Another way to get minions is to win battles. Every time you win a fight against flesh and blood enemies of a little extra room in your party, the corpses from the battlefield are resurrected. You do not choose what kind of minions are made in this way. Usually it is the most basic kind of undead, but if you've killed 500 people in the battle, you'll get a lot of cheap minions this way. At higher necromancy levels, you'll also occasionally get lucky and retrieve hundreds of shadows, which can be trained and upgraded into advanced units like Shadow Assassins, Shadow Knights, and Shadow Mages. Another thing to mention in this mod is morale. In Mountain Blade, troops have morale, and it's damaged under certain conditions. Losing battles, long stretches of inactivity like marching around the map aimlessly, or fighting against their fellow men will reduce morale. What I mean with fighting against fellow men is, if you have a drow in your party, and you're at war with the drow faction, and smashing their shit up, it will reduce the morale of your drow units. These are all standard Mountain Blade morale mechanics present in the Villa game. However, in Fantasy Karadia, they took it a step further. Units that are considered good, like paladins, or units that are normal, like your average human trooper, do not like the company of undead, or any other evil unit for that matter. Any usual troops in your army will end up deserting due to the presence of the undead in your forces. This means that as a necromancer who chooses to use undead, you'll need to use either entirely undead forces, or undead forces supplemented by evil units that do not have any qualms about serving among undead. This means you'll need to use orcs, drow, or demonic units to complement your undead minions. 
You could get away with a pure undead army, but it's good to diversify. Undead units are unaffected by your surgeon skill, so unlike a regular unit that will most likely go unconscious once defeated in battle and resurrected afterwards if you win, undead units will stay dead. This means you can lose a lot of very important units if they're undead. Orcish and Drow units are also capable of a lot that undead are not, so my armies are always a bit diverse. It helps when you're fighting priests and holy mages as well. These guys can blast your undead with holy light and banish them, but orcs and drow are unaffected by these spells. One strange thing about the mod is that your undead also have morale. You gotta keep your undead happy with the best foods and plenty of stimulation as you would normal troops. Unhappy undead will get fed up with you and desert. Fortunately, it's not very hard to keep these troops happy in this game. So yeah, if you like big armies of undead and you want to ride around conquering everything and everyone, I can really recommend this. It's very well done. It also allows you to become a lich, but I've never gotten that far. It's something I'm still working on. It requires lots of gold and some very unique items. So yes, this mod comes highly recommended from me. If you're a fan of necromancy and mountain blade, it's definitely worth a try. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.